when I buy a bag for life, I think, yeah, probably is. Look at that, pretty cool, hey? Uh, this was a, a Kickstarter reward for the new uh, Oh Frig on 50 DVD, which is now out. We've only made a thousand of these and most of them have gone to the Kickstarter. So if you want to get one of these, go to gofasterstripe.com and you can buy either a special edition, with limited edition signed one where you'll get this bag as well, or just get the DVD and you'll get this check for 15 pounds times two, which is pretty good. If you cash that, that you'll actually be in profit. Um, it's a four disc DVD. It's got Oh Fuck, oh fuck I'm 40. It's got Oh Fuck I'm 40 and it's got Oh Frig I'm 50 and two bonus discs, including a snooker tournament I, I played against myself in an in a, a art festival for transgressive art, which offended the transgressive artists so much that they many of them left the show. Anyway, you can get that at Go Faster Stripe. You can also get, of course, the emergency questions book with questions like, um, what makes a good answer to a question? What makes a good answer to this specific question? Rubbish one. Uh, and of course, uh, this podcast is sponsored by beer52.com. If you go to beer52.com slash you can get eight free craft beers and just pay £2.95 for them to be sent to you. Uh, and then you can stay on board and get eight craft beers a month for £24, or you can leave. It's up to you. Anyway, thanks very much to them for sponsoring the show. Thanks very much to everyone who did the Kickstarter for this show and for the, and for the DVD. And now let's sit back, relax, and enjoy. You can get the book at gofasterstripe.com slash EQ. Let's sit back and enjoy Rahalastapa, Rahalastapa with Greg Davies. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who's just been advised to do his belt up backstage. <laughs> Come on. He's done up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the Leicester Square Theatre. This is. Uh... <laughs> done up. Uh, I've just undid it. I've been to the toilet. I undid it. I just did a wee. It's not. I was, uh, welcome to the Rich Chang's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. I was hanging around with the Bader Meinhof gang. Um, they are not as much fun as that name makes them sound. I have to say they were quite unpleasant. Quite unpleasant people in many ways. They call it Rahelis. They call it Rahelis. You know, they do it in a German accent like I did just then. So, um, uh, what was I going to talk to you about? Uh, I would, I, I, you know, my book is out, uh, Emergency Questions. Uh, do buy that and do uh, support our sponsor, Beer52. Second week in a row, no beers have turned up. And um, <laughs> beer52.com slash Rahelastaba if you want some, if you want some free beer. Uh, but I, I'd mentioned in, in another week that uh, I'm in the Amazon... There's a, it's like a quite obscure chart with about four subheadings, and the final one is fa fun facts and trivia. And I, I, you know, I got up as high as I think I got to number one actually for a very brief time. But I've been fighting against a man called Hugh Jasburn, um, <laughs> whose book uh, "52 Things to Learn on the Loo." I'm not sure it's his real name. I'm not sure. <laughs> Hugh Jasburn. We agreed to, we'd swap books and I'd buy his book if he bought my book. Joke's on him, it's got, only cost five, mine cost uh, 9 dollars 9 so. <laughs> Already up, but you know, he's only got 52 things in here and I've got 1,001 in mine. Um, it's a very good, it's, you know, it is better than the name suggests. That's what I'm gonna say, and I can see why it always does quite well in the charts. Um, you can learn the two cork release trick on the toilet. Hold a cork in each hand as shown above. Place the tip of the thumb on the top of the cork in the opposite hand. Using index fingers, reach around, grab corks and pull apart. Show a friend, give them the corks, watch them fail. I mean, you know. <laughs> I did my best for you, Hugh, but it is no taking a page at random. Uh, if you were in hospital, would you prefer to die than be Patch Adams? Not as good as that, is it? So, not as good as that. Not as good as that. So, I'm uh, very much looking forward to, uh, to our guest this week. He has been on before. 
I told him backstage it was one of my top three podcasts I've ever done. My favourites is a lie, and he's rubbish. Uh, it was it was mainly me that was good. He is probably come on, Ian Gunpowder. That was me. That was all me. So he's probably best known as Balloon Man in Teen Titans Go to the Movies, which is actually quite a big fucking deal. It's Greg Davies. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I'm very well, thank you. Good. I'm I've glad just, to um, um, I've just been uh, sitting backstage where it's uh, insufferably hot. <laughs> and, uh, now I'm sweating like the uh, fat prick. I truly am. <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> We deliberately ramp it up backstage just yeah, to get it's people. Right. It's genuinely uncomfortable, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we do you got new chairs, Rich, since the last time. I'm new what? Chairs. Yeah, they are nice, nice aren't they? Isn't it? Kickstarter money. This is where, <laughs> where it all goes. That's where it all gets blown. Look Lovely. They're very nice. Didn't, I, I was sitting on a very bad chair on last week's podcast. I forgot to mention how awful. All the, the ladies had lovely, these lovely chairs, and I was sat on... If you saw it up close, it was barely a chair. And we're off. It looked like... <laughs> <laughs> so, Balloon Man. Yeah. That's, but this is a big deal, Balloon Man. It sounds like a funny thing, but it's... It, it, is it I, out in the UK, Is it a, a big deal? I don't know. It's a Hollywood movie. It's a Hollywood thing, but I think, like I think all the kids like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was just a... You know, they clearly decided um, that they wanted... It was a tiny bit part, and they just went through the roller decks of incredibly <laughs> fat, farting, <laughs> disgusting old comedians. Yeah. And uh, I got the part, yeah. But it, is, it took me about an hour, and uh, I die within ten seconds. Right. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's an animation, though, so you know, yeah, they, didn't yeah. need, they didn't need to get, like, literally a balloon man. No, they get... didn't. <laughs> they obviously thought that it should be genuine, so, yeah. <laughs> It's just a disgusting fat creature yeah. that just farts all the time and then um, is destroyed within 30 seconds of the film starting. <laughs> so, big break. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently people like um, uh, Teen Titans. Titans Go. <laughs> I'm, not, I wasn't, I'm not aware of it. It's too old for my kids. That's the problem. So, I'm, you know, I'm more into uh, Waffle the Wonder Dog and... Yeah, all the yeah. classics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He can, he can talk. I forgot to ask about how they got managed to find a talking dog to do that. Uh, so, it must have been taking a long time. Um, so, um, <laughs> oh, we had such fun. We had such fun backstage. Um, we'll build up. It's all right. And, uh, no, I think it was the chair story. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was good, the chair story. It'd be better if the chair had been here yeah. for me to look, say, look, it's not Wait as good as these yeah, chairs. Yeah, re recounting a chair that but, no one's seen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a basic, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like we should try and tell a chair story that is funny, though. Okay. Have you got a funny chair story? I... W <laughs> I was on a, a... When I was living in rented accommodation, I was on a small two-seater velour sofa during the day when I should have been teaching children. I'd taken the day off. And God punished me because as I was watching daytime telly, I was just in my pants. I uh, copped my leg to uh, let out a fart and I fully filled my pants full of shit. <laughs> Did Andy go on the, on the chair? Weirdly, here's yeah. the thing. <laughs> here's the weird thing. Yeah. Because I am an unashamed brief wearer, none did go it's on the awesome. velour sofa. <laughs> it could have been awful. And yeah. I really remember walking to the toilet. <laughs> but I think it's... I think it's unusual, even when, it, when you've got a tummy complaint, to go from naught to 100 miles an hour <laughs> like that. Normally, there would be a sort of... Oh, no, I just, Sure, I'm feeling all that well, <laughs> but not, not for. Oh, yeah, I wonder what's on this morning. To <laughs> just a full payload. Yeah. When I was at school, it, you um, 
it was sort of frowned upon to use the <laughs> toilets to poo in, right? You're, you're, yeah. When you're seven or eight, you couldn't... If anyone did a poo in the toilet, then people would climb up and laugh at them. And yeah. you, people would... You, if you, you're you meant to poo at There's home. There's a boy in my school um, who still lives in my hometown <laughs> yeah. and who is still called Poo Boy for that very reason. <laughs> And that is absolutely true. He's the son of the now dead uh, local news agent. Right. <laughs> Still called Poo Boy. Never shit in a I, school I toilet. I knew tipper. twice I'd chat in my pants rather than go to the toilet. What a full shit. <laughs> yeah. And walked home. Like I was in the sick room. I, was fe- I said I was feeling unwell. Hang on, mate. And then I Hang sat on. in the sick room. Hang on. <laughs> so you needed a shit. Yeah. And you logically, as a child, thought to yourself, I can't risk being embarrassed by my schoolmates, so yeah. I'm going to do a full turd. <laughs> yeah. I was in the sick room because I wasn't feeling very well, so that was part of the reason. The, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. And I remember the teacher came in and checked on me every now and again, and once I completely pooed myself, they came in, they went, you might as well go home now. <laughs> I think he'd smelt the poo. There I mean, I would assume so. There wasn't a toilet attached to the sick room. No. So you just thought, like, I'm going to fu- yeah. well, <laughs> fully could... do a shit in and my butt. And everyone was in lessons still, so I could have snuck in and used... It would have been one of the tiny toilets from the first years in the middle school. You know, um, when I was at um, primary school, I'm, I'm not sure... I've... What I'm worried about doing this podcast is that I am a, a middle-aged man now and I won't remember any of the stories I told last time, so I'm probably going to repeat myself. When I was at primary school... Your poo stories are so delightful, Greg. Oh, no, no, no. We, 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 they they bear a second <laughs> lesson, don't they? This isn't a... I was, um, I, I was in primary school and I threw a girl's pencil across the classroom in an act of unprovoked spite. <laughs> and um, the, the head teacher, Mr Lowe, yep, no, 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 now no. dead... Um, he saw me throw the pencil across the classroom and he grabbed me and he picked me up and he put me on the table and we were like in group tables so all a little group all sat around one big yeah. table dotted around the classroom and he grabbed me and he went I saw that boy and he put me on the table and just in sheer fear I just pissed myself <laughs> and so it was just <laughs> I think it's my earliest school memory of me just fully pissing all over a table that my friend, my best friends were sitting around yeah. and it all spattering. And, and it really scared Mr Lowe. You could see, you go, I wasn't expecting him to piss himself. But he knew he had to style it out. So he's all like, ah, oh, oh, well, yeah, that's it. You've, you've soiled yourself now. As if, of course, that's what happens. That's what happens if you throw a girl's pants across a classroom. <laughs> and now you've pissed all over a table. <laughs> you now must go and change. And they took me away. Anyway, uh, as a consequence of that, for, I mean, 25 years, I was known as Tabletop in my <laughs> town throughout my whole secondary school. Now, simultaneously, in another classroom, Miss Lorks's classroom, uh, my friend Stephen Jones had shat himself. I, I think on the, <laughs> the same day. So I became known as Tabletop and he became known as um, Kaki Ass. <laughs> and we sort of developed a, a, a bond over yeah. the, the years. So I would go past him and go... <laughs> and he would go... <laughs> <laughs> for years. Yeah. About three years ago, we had a school reunion uh, in a local pub. Like, like, I went to school in the, the, 1979. <laughs> And as I was put up to the pub in my car, I thought, that's khaki. <laughs> that's khaki ass at the catch point outside the pub. And he had his back to me, and I wound my window down, and I went, oh, I haven't seen him for 30 years. I wound my window down, and I went, Pfft. and without turning around, he went, Pfft. incredible. He didn't even check it was me. He went, oh, I know that, I know my old foe. Good. Uh, so, um, <laughs> uh, you, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to do all things that have happened since 2014 when you were last on. Okay. A lot well, of bad I, stuff's happened. I haven't pooed myself. <laughs> but a lot of bad stuff's You're happened. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've pooed myself since 2014. Not in any serious way. Uh, in a, uh, <laughs> Just in a loose middle age way. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> well, we're both, you, we're both in our 50s now, which we went, are you 50? I don't know whether I'm in my 50s. Yeah. What, you're 50? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're in. You're not in your 50s, you're, so you're in. 51, I think. No, you're in. You're in. No, I'm 50. <laughs> There's which a distinction. Is, which is one of the 50s. One of the, with the 10 50s. I don't think it is. I think, uh, <laughs> uh, I think the decades are marked by separate entities, and this is a year of youthful exuberance. <laughs> OK. I'm 51, so I'm definitely in my 50s. Fuck it out. Well into my 50s. I'm amazed you haven't shot yourself. <laughs> Granddad. <laughs> You said in, well, I think you said in your, your absolutely excellent uh, stand-up special that's on uh, Netflix, You Magnificent Beast. Thank you, Richard. Um, uh, what I love about this job is it's my job on a Monday to just watch you do comedy for an hour. It was very good. Uh, so you said, I think, you have less to look forward to at 50, or certainly in an interview, maybe, if not in the show. Yeah. Did you really feel like that? Do you feel like life's ebbing away? I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm... I, I think it really broadsides you, 50. I think you can't... I, I can't quite believe it. I was talking to a, a, a mate of mine who... And, and we were literally yesterday, what feels like yesterday, fantasising about what our lives would be like when we were 30. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like, bang! It ah, is quick. Fuck! I know it's a cliche, but it is like, what the fuck? I sort of feel like... 30 to 50 is like, you know, like there's that experiment where doctors were sucking out people's hypothalamus to see what would happen. Yeah. Uh, and then it, they lost all their memories. <laughs> I sort of feel like that's what happens. Yeah, Just, yeah, yeah, I love it. Oh. <laughs> and then you've woken up the next day and go, but I'm still 30, that's my yeah. long-term memory. Uh, so that's that's quite bad. Yeah, it's I terrifying. mean, you have nothing in your life, though. I've got two children, so yeah, you, know, yeah, it's, true. You, you literally have no... True. I, I had to put all my energy into my career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and obviously, I would prefer to be doing the stuff you're doing, but I, but I, I, of have, course. I have two children, and that's a good consolation a, prize. A really good friend of mine said to me the other day, and he was not joking, he was not trying to get a reaction out of me. He said, oh, I think if I had my time, I'd go, I'd go back now and I wouldn't have the kids. <laughs> I just, I just get a couple of dogs, probably. <laughs> and I went, what? you mean if you could literally go back in time now, you would erase your children? He goes, yeah, I think so, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, on balance, I think so, because all, all they do is uh, complain and look on the internet. <laughs> I do that voice for all my impressions of all, all my friends. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't... My... <laughs> My, my, probably my betty mate uh, um, lived with me um, a couple of years ago because, um, um, well, you don't need to know this, this is unnecessary detail. <laughs> he got divorced there. Uh, and we were like two 49 year old losers. Yeah. But I, fucking, I just fucking loved it. It was, it was like a reliving just going back to being a student and we lived like students and we ate curry every day and <laughs> just got drunk all the time. It was great and I'm sorry yeah. that he's now happy in another relationship <laughs> because it was such great fun. Anyway, he does talk a bit like that. And um, uh, I said to him one Sunday, I'm going for, um, I'm going to go and have a meal with a couple of other mates, do you want to come? And he went, um. <laughs> And I don't know why this is, makes me laugh so much. And uh, maybe, I was like, right. He went, um, yeah, I don't see, um, I don't see why not, because uh, all I've had to eat today is an individual cherry bakewell and a bowl of, <laughs> and a bowl of cheese. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? He said it, he said it as if, well, that's why everyone, I mean, <laughs> You know, everybody, when, they're, uh, when they've not planned their meals, just settle for <laughs> that famous British meal, a bowl of cheese. <laughs> you know, people, everyone has a bowl of cheese. No, they fucking, <laughs> no, they fucking don't. <laughs> it's a bowl of cheese, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you another story about yeah, this? Yes, please. <laughs> When I, uh, oh no, I uh, shouldn't have used his uh, actual name. <laughs> I 
This is a different mate, actually. <laughs> It's a different mate uh, who does have the same voice as that guy. <laughs> and his name's uh, Tony. And um, it was in the 90s when I was teaching. Yeah. And there were two really attractive teachers, both of whom I really fancied and was desperately try trying to impress. And they were having a... <laughs> They were having a conversation about how disappointing the male fantasy of two women being together is. They were sort of saying it's just pathetic that that's men's default setting, that they think that, you know, that women are all uh, 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 sort of gorging on each other. And, and whatever, that male, that, that male fantasy exists. And they were saying it was pathetic and predictable. Yeah. And, of course, I was trying to impress them, so I was pretending that I find um, the idea of two women together on appealing as well. So I was going, oh, God, it's just pathetic, isn't it? It's just, is that the best you can do, just imagining two women being together? God almighty, yeah. And then Tony came in, and he came in, <laughs> it was a break time, and he went, um, all right? And we went, all right, Tony. And he goes, um, what are you talking about? And one of the girls went, oh, we're just talking about them, you know, ma the male fantasy of two, with two women being together. And before she could say anything else, he went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The thought of you two... <laughs> Let me tell you the whole quote, it's astounding. The thought of you two tender chickens <laughs> pecking away at each other is more than I can bear. <laughs> Pecking away at each other. It's offensive. It's offensive on so many levels. <laughs> Tender. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, they were a bit frosty, weren't they? <laughs> Oh, frosty. <laughs> I think um, I was interested about your stand-up, and like as a 49, 50-year-old man as you're doing this show, is that your glee is still your childish glee is still there. With my, I've done a show about turning 40 and a show about turning 50, and they're both sort of a little bit. The 41 more so than the 51, really, about going, oh, God, can I carry on being childish and yeah. I'm going to, you know, is it, is it the end because I'm too old? You don't seem to have <laughs> those same concerns. No, I don't. It's just and, the sort and, of celebration you know, of seeing this. Much to the detriment of my personal <laughs> life. But I think I, think I um, you know, I, it's, I, it's well documented. I grew up in a house where, with an in, in sensationally childish father. Yes. And, uh, so I think the die was cast, yeah. But yeah, of course, we're all just, you know, we're all going to die soon, aren't we? So <laughs> yeah. May but as well be silly while we can. It is. I mean, it's incredibly yeah. funny. It generally is a such funny show. And there's no, I mean, there's a little bit, because there's a little bit about your dad, so there's a little bit of, uh, like, a soup song of, like, emotion in there. But yeah. it's, it's always undercut, really. It's just great. You know, there's so many stand-up specials and stand-ups doing this worthy and serious and doing dead dad shows that are like, um, you know, yeah, oh, my dad died. But and, I think you know, but it's, it's, it's so much fun to see someone being silly and But I think fun. that's fine yeah, uh, uh, if that's what... If, yeah. if you need to get it off your chest in a public forum, that's fine. But I choose not to yeah. be sad <laughs> on stage. But yeah. I think it's OK if that's a, a good way of you dealing with it. But, you know, I, I only mentioned... Uh, I, I would... Uh, the thing I love about stand-up is that y you're in um, absolute control of what you release. Yeah. Yeah. So I would mention that he's died, but only because I want to say a funny thing that he... Yeah. It's a way into... Yeah, but, you know, but it's, it's interesting because I think, something like... something well, joyous me, about him. Sure. I mean, yeah. it's still a lovely... It's a lovely tribute for that because that's the kind of man that he obviously was as well. Yeah. Uh, and, but, you know, critically, I guess, you know, I don't think I've laughed at, you know, many stand-up shows as much as I laughed at your one, but, you know, critically people will go, you know, oh, where's the... Where's the depth to it all? And, you know, well, it's they there. might. It's there. It, it is just, there. They just need to look a bit fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> you got a quite a good review from Brian Logan in the Garden. I don't know if you read your reviews, but, it's, but I read that one. Yeah, yeah. It, but it, it was a four star that read like a one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 
such a <laughs> four begrudging stars. He's such a sniffy. I mean, he's he's the archetypal reviewer who wants every stand-up show to be what he would do if he was doing a stand-up yeah, show, yeah. which is a political stand-up show, basically. I don't know. You know, I mean, but, he gave me four stars. So he, yeah. must, he must be all right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he gave me four stars as well after he nearly. Uh, I nearly got him sacked from the Guardian, so he had to. So it's um, <laughs> a long, st- long story. But he does mention in that review, I think a, a routine that is, at least isn't in the Netflix live show. Is the is the Netflix live show shorter than the? Yeah, I had show? to chop it down to yeah. an hour. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why they like. Because he that. mentions uh, a routine about Doctor Dicklifter. Doctor Dicklifter. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's in the Netflix. Special. Did I take that out? I think so. I don't. I, yeah. you know. I might. Well, that's a. Hun- a hun- like most of it, it's just 100% true. Yeah. Do you want me to tell it? Yeah, I mean, I was interested to know, but I, I had a, a massage who, a guy who wants to my penis I, a lot. I mean, it is a, it is on the surface a yeah. genuine story of uh, awful sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go for a medical. We, when you do any kind of teleproject, you have to go for um, a, a standard medical. Uh, and in my opinion, it's largely a pointless exercise. It's so that they can say you've been sent for a medical. And you normally get sent to one particular doctor in, um, uh, what's it called? Harley Street. Oh, yeah, okay. Who, who really, uh, who's lovely, but largely just says, how are you? Are you all right? No. <laughs> and then he talks about his son for about 10 minutes. And then you leave after he listens to your heart. But then I got sent for this one show to a different doctor I'd never met. And he um, and I have a massive fear of authority. Some of my friends call me FOA because I anyone in any position of authority, I'll do whatever they say. Yeah. And he went, "Oh, well, you were quick medical, are we?" Oh, no. He was about seventy. He was have a little look at you, and then uh, pop behind the old uh, pop behind the old uh, screen and uh, to pop your clothes off. And I went, <laughs> "Oh, I I didn't have to. I don't normally have to take." He goes, yeah, if you could pop your clothes off, that would be good. <laughs> So I just did it straight away, down to my pants. And he came in and he tapped my knee like, like that, because that's really important. Then he listened to my heart, then he took my blood pressure. And then, just with no warning whatsoever, he just took my pants and went whoop, whoop. And I went, <gasps> because I wasn't expecting someone to expose my penis. And then. <laughs> He was talking, this is my face, he was talking to me, and he just took hold of the tip of my penis and lifted it two inches in the air so it was upright. And then he just carried on going, how long are you, how long are you filming for? Lovely, it must be quite the life. Quite the life being an actor. And he held it for about, um, I worked out because there was a clock behind you. <laughs> I worked out, he held my penis upright for three minutes while he was talking to me, and then he uh, popped it down. And I went home and went, I don't think that's a medical thing. I, I can't think of any reason why, why to make you sure you're fit for filming, you have to have your penis lifted three inches in the air and held by a 70-year-old man. And it sort of troubled me. I mean, he didn't do anything with it. He just yeah. held it. <laughs> and then I went on set, and I, uh, and I saw the director, who's um, about 10 years younger than me, and buff, and much better looking. And uh, I went, do you, um, do you have to go for the medical for the thing? He goes, yeah, 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 I did. And I could see he was a bit shifty. And I went, was it... Um, <laughs> Was that all right? That pan out all right? He went, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. And I went, did anything strange happen? He goes, yeah, well, he goes, actually, yes. Like, <laughs> something did happen. He, he, he grabbed my dick and, um, and he lifted it in the air. And I went, right! <laughs> he did the same to me! He goes, I know, oh, thank God, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird, right? I said, it's fucking weird. And this is absolutely true. He goes, honestly, God, it's the l- longest five minutes of my life. <laughs> And I was genuinely furious. <laughs> he held his dick for longer. Maybe he was timing like a, he was boiling an egg or something and he needed to time it. <laughs> yes, no, uh, 
They saw it was hard boiled for the well, other so guy. So the lifting of my dick was in- <laughs> incidental. <laughs> that was just the way he did it. Just well, my dick my... doesn't keep time, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe to him, it's some, maybe he's counting the <laughs> your pulse or something. You oh, get, you get. <laughs> that's why he took my pulse. That's why he listened to my heart first to make sure. <laughs> To make sure that my heart was <laughs> keeping perfect time, and then in order to boil his egg, he was able to feel my pulse through my lifted penis. Yes. <laughs> of course! <laughs> of course! <laughs> oh dear. Good, I don't know why that didn't make it onto the Netflix special, that's good. So, um. <laughs> I think what is interesting, you talk about your dad and, and your dad um, making up lots of stories mm. for you and, and playing tricks on you, making stuff up. Yeah. Which sort of that makes me wonder, because a lot of things you talk about in your show <coughs> are mildly unbelievable. They're not, but they are true. Well, but that's what your dad would say. Is that, is no, that no, you, but are you are, carrying the torch? But they are, and I, you, yeah, they are. Yeah. But that's what I find funny, and I think that is, you know, when lots of comedians are trying to find the truth in their comedy, and I literally, I literally find things that genuinely happen to the funniest. Yeah. And the only thing I'm guilty of is is merging stories and you know messing around with timelines. But the 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 starting point, the the thing that's made me laugh, yeah. normally happened. Yeah. You would say that, though, wouldn't you? No, but it's yeah, true. If you're a big liar, you uh, would say it's it. true. <laughs> would say it. um, so, well, it was when I met you, we were talking about uh, Rick, and you had just done um, the first series of Man Down, I think, when we last talked on here. Yeah. And uh, and then obviously that same year, you, we'd lost Rick, and you, you also lost your dad as well. Yeah. So that was a pretty within two months, I yeah. think, is a double dad death. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> Impressive to lose a fictitious dad yeah. and a real dad in one year, yeah. Yeah. How, how, did, how did you cope with it, really? Was it, was it... Oh, it was horrible. I mean, it was bad enough, me never having met Rick Mayall. I was so, I, the other day I was interviewed for the Young Ones documentary, and I, I don't cry all the time. I'm crying now. <laughs> uh, and I told you about crying in the last podcast, but I, I was <coughs> started talking about Rick Mayall, and I generally started crying. Did you? In the interview. They don't they used it, because no one's... No, well, no they wouldn't are. want the, <laughs> the insane man on their program. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of me crying on the cutting room floor <laughs> of pointless and Rick Mail of young ones documentaries. But it, you know, you've been working with him, and he was such a big part of that show. And I think you you know, and it was a, a lifetime ambition for yeah, me. Course, I yeah. never thought I would ever work with him or yeah. meet him or have you know have anything. And then then I'm being invited round to his house for tea and planning shows and yeah it was ter- it was terribly terribly sad but the reason it was sad for me is because he was still you know he had that awful accident in the 90s and yeah. and was clearly affected by that um ongoing you know it was it had an ongoing effect on him because he that almost killed him in fact he was dead for 5 days i think he he loved that telling people that. Yeah. I heard him tell that story at least three times because he uh, was dead for longer than Christ was. <laughs> 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 but um, it was dreadful. It, 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 the reason, I didn't know him well. There's no point in me pretending that we were best friends. You know, we worked on one series of a thing together. Yeah. But it was terribly sad for me because he was so full of beans still and he was still, he wasn't old, he was only no. mid-50s and um, same sort of age as you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I could pop enough anyway. Could be popping off. And um, yeah, he was just so enthusiastic and full of life. And, yeah. Yeah. There was no, there was no sort of complacency on set. He just wanted to be as funny as possible and yeah, as mad as possible. So was it a difficult decision to carry on with Man Down, or was that no? That always, wasn't. Yeah. That w- wasn't uh, difficult because uh, the, the easy decision was not to replace him. That, yeah. That was. Was, we were never not going to carry on with it, but um, the only thing that could have been tricky is do you try and get someone to play that father role? And I, mean, I decided that in about 10 seconds, there's no point. It's no. ridiculous, isn't it? Well, uh, who ten... would say yes? <laughs> yeah. Do you want well, to take over would. from Rick Mayle? Someone yeah. would, and it would be... You know, you see that sitcom where, some, where a character's been replaced, even if it's not exactly the same character, and it's yeah. always a bit when a major character goes. But, yeah. but it was very moving. That The episode you did was a... 
the, the first one you did was a very moving kind of homage to both. I hope so. Your dads. Uh, uh, yeah, it was really, uh, yeah. It was very hard to write. <laughs> yeah. It was very, it's the hardest thing I've done in this silly business is to write a show about a father dying sort of after my actual dad yeah. had died and the character who played <laughs> my dad had died. It was about, just about the hardest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, boo hoo! My, my dad's still alive, so he's uh, he's eight. He's eight. <laughs> Last time I checked, so he's uh, it's, <laughs> it's great. I've got both of them still alive. It's great. Uh, so, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really pleased for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you joke in the my show. My mum's all right. Yeah, your mum's fine. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we, you joke in the show about you know you, you're taking so much material from your parents, and so you know you're quite you're funny about saying your dad dying has has screwed that up a bit for you. But you know, yeah, did your, did your mum was your mum really resistant to you doing stuff? You do you still do do a lot about your mum in the? In I the do, show. and I just can't get away from it. I, I and I try to because I, I I just did a gig over at the comedy store just now, and I said foolishly, I do panic that I, I might come across on stage as having a sort of Savile-esque relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone down just as badly here, interesting. <laughs> but you know that sort of obsessional, yeah. weird middle-aged man talking about his mum still? <laughs> and so I do, I do genuinely, constantly... Uh, uh, yeah, that's the only similarity I have with Savile. <laughs> so I do sort of constantly vow that I'm never going to talk about her again yeah. and she's happy about that she's like good I think it is time you moved on now <laughs> and, and stopped and then and here's an example of what then happened <laughs> um, and this happened um, a few weeks ago I vowed since that show where I once again focus massively on the stupid things she says um, I was round at her best mate's house a few weeks ago we went for drinks because her daughter was visiting and um, we were having a glass of wine and they were talking about um, what it was like being pregnant in, with me and with her daughter in the 1960s, what it was like. And there were two things that I, I was... I remember thinking, oh, don't, don't remember this, don't write it down, don't write it down, you don't talk about her anymore. And she goes, because the first thing she said was, because of, um, of course I was absolutely repulsed by pregnancy. And I went, ah... Oh. Okay. Thank you. She was disgusted. I couldn't wait to get you out of me. And I went, okay. And then she said, um, then, uh, of course, uh, I gave up smoking uh, with you, but I didn't bother with your sister. <laughs> and I went, okay. Why? She goes, well, isn't it obvious? And I said, no. She goes, well, you're giant, aren't you? <laughs> and I had... Um, I had an awful time giving birth to you, and I'd, I'd read in a paper that women who smoke are in danger of giving birth to <laughs> underdeveloped infants, and I thought that would make it easier for me. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? I said, what, you, you tried to shrink my sister in the womb? What are you, a fucking 17th century witch? <laughs> So I just can't imagine she's ever going to stop yeah. uh, making me laugh. Yeah. I was thinking about Jimmy Savile's mum the other day. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult wank. <laughs> when you get older, you take, you've got to take a run up at it. <laughs> you need to go dark sometimes. <laughs> I know. She didn't do anything wrong. Oh, no. She didn't do anything wrong. You know, he kept like all her clothes oh, in, Christ, like, yeah, in his did flat, he? and he dry cleaned them every year, I think, or something like That's that. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we don't know why he did that, uh, but um, <laughs> do you think I'd never even thought? Do you know, <laughs> did you know? I think you're being a bit harsh on Jimmy Savile <laughs> to judge him by your dirty standards. <laughs> What do you think happened to all of her clothes when he died? Do you think like someone's walking around wearing Jimmy Savile's mum's dress, or do you think they were like because the gravestone got all smashed up and destroyed, didn't it? Yeah. Do you think they destroyed? Do you think they got burned? I don't think or there'd be a big they... market for them. 
They might just go to a charity know. shop then. I don't they? think Scope would be advertising. <laughs> what happened to them he looked after them so well <laughs> um, so you are hosting the Royal Variety performance shortly. yes I am how's that how's that Trusty, be? isn't it it's another thing that I've done for my mum right. yeah just uh, in between getting all her clothes dry cleaned <laughs> She's fine if she's alive. I think that's a nice thing if she's alive. I don't know. I don't know how that'll be because I don't. You know, if you've watched even ten minutes of any of my stand-up shows, you know, it's just absolutely disgusting, unsayable filth. And yeah. I think it's. Um, uh, it, it's. It, I've done it before. I've done it as a as a comic, right. and um, it was fine. But it's not my crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm the host. So I don't know. We'll see. You know, what are you planning some... on... I mean, you know, don't... What are you gonna... I've got some ideas. I don't know whether they'll work or not in front of that crowd. I don't is know. The, is the but... Queen in? Is the, do, you know, do you know which no, one? No, I can tell you it's not the Queen, but I'm not, I don't think I'm allowed to tell you who the royals are for some is protocol. It's, is it because it's Prince Andrew? <laughs> I'm not telling... I don't think I'm allowed to tell you. Okay. I won't, I won't. Put I don't care, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you off stage, yeah. and I'll meet all of you individually, <laughs> and I'll tell you. I'm just not going to tell you on this. Okay, I don't want to get into and No one cares. Um, but I think it'll be nice. Yeah. And there's some nice comics on the bill, and uh, it'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. I don't, see, I just don't, I wouldn't know where to start. I mean, it's, well, not, nor likely do I. To, it's not likely to happen to me. But... Nor do I, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, and you were on uh, Who Do You Think You Are, which is what I, the only reason I'd like to be as famous as you is so I could go on Who Do You Think You Are. It's the best thing. So yeah, such a shame you won't get to do it. It is. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is the best thing. <laughs> and is there loads that doesn't get on the telly? There is. Do you know what? There's disappoint. It's disappointing some of the stuff that doesn't get on the telly. Yeah. And, and even to the extent, and I understand why they have to do it because they have to edit the complicated stories down. Yeah. But I was finding they were cutting whole humans out of the story. Right. There were whole, sort of whole, like, sisters of characters who died in weird circumstances and they were um, chopping it out. And they chopped out this um, amazing thing. We, we, met, we met this expert. They have, you meet these experts on the journey. And we met this um, expert from a Welsh university who came off script, the producer, understandably, is trying to stick to the story of finding out... It was finding out who my grandmother's dad was, because yeah. we as a family have never known, and they found out who, who her dad was on this bizarre telly programme. But we met this um, guy, and he was talking about um, courting techniques in rural Wales <laughs> at the time. And there was a courting technique known as bundling, and this didn't make it on the show, and it is my favourite thing I learnt on the whole journey. That at that time, because I, I was saying it would be a scandal for my um, great-grandmother to be pregnant out of wedlock, surely. And now my great-great-grandmother to be pregnant out of wedlock. And he said, no, it wouldn't have been. It only became a scandal sort of early 1900s. Right. In the late 1800s, there was nothing scandalous about getting pregnant out of wedlock in rural Wales <laughs> because there was a technique called bundling where, and this was widely practiced, where a young man would go to a farm and sneak into the, one of the daughter's bedrooms and have sex with her. And then if she got pregnant, he knew that he got a good one there. And uh, then they would get married. Right. Because there was no point in marrying her, uh, a woman unless she could give him loads of kids to right. work on his remote farm where they'd all be really unhappy and want to kill themselves. <laughs> When they're going and bundling, it's with people that they that want to be bundled, though, right? Oh yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Because it just sounded a little bit rapey the oh, way you no, described no. it, which, which is why I think why no, I think everyone's got a bit quiet. It's gone a bit quiet. <laughs> and I did think this is an interesting story, you fucking assholes. No, sorry, I, I should make it very clear that the that the daughter of the family would open the door <laughs> and welcome the young man in. <laughs> I found most interesting about the whole story was it was totally okay to rape people <laughs> uh, in the 1800s. Have you noticed the voice I'm using? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so there was nothing scandalous no. in um, rural Wales about 
getting knocked up in in the late 1800s. Right. And it was the government who decided... I've seen the, the government paper that basically said all these fucking farmers are all, are all banging each other and having a great time, <laughs> getting pregnant. We've got to get them into church. One of your ancestors is a ghost as well. What do you mean? <laughs> One of your ancestors is a ghost. One of your ancestors died in, like, a car accident or something. What was oh, it? yeah. And then yeah. people have said he haunts it. He haunts the valley, yeah. yeah. Of course he doesn't because <laughs> ghosts don't exist. <laughs> but the locals seem to think that he, in my great-great-grandfather still uh, marches around the valley, yeah. yeah. Well, why would they think if it isn't true? Oh, it must be then. <laughs> <laughs> be good having an ancestor as a ghost. I'd, I'd be going, I just thought they would try and film you with the ghost. Mm. Did they spend any time doing that? Trying to film you no, with they the... didn't. They didn't try and film me with a ghost, Rich. Okay. <laughs> So I, that's why I'm not the producer of who you are, I guess. <laughs> I'd have spent most of the budget on that. <laughs> you waited at night in that valley. <laughs> go, come on, if we get this, and you can go, well, hey, what was it yeah, like well, being... Well, it was a bit of a rum and money, that guy. That well, was... see for yourself, there he yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> who do you are? Where do you think that came from? <laughs> that all ghosts go... <laughs> <laughs> They're not happy about being ghosts, are they? I, I reckon I'd be quite happy about it because you go, it's a bit like, extra time, isn't it? Better than being dead. I'd be going, I'd be the, I'd be the thumbs up ghost. <laughs> Wuthering Heights would have been a very different story <laughs> with you as the ghost. Heathcliff. <laughs> 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 the window. <laughs> It's all right. Can I come in? <laughs> With your consent. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I, this is an emergency question that I've noticed. Uh, in the, it was in the Daily Express. It's asked in the Daily Express. It's exclusively asked to women, and I find that sexist, so I'm going to ask it to my male guests from now on. Okay, good. It's the Daily Express. Is, I hope uh, it's about my vagina. Daily, <laughs> Express is, Daily Express is question. What's your beauty secret? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, don't, men, men don't get asked this question ever. You're oh, a very sexy man. Women thank, like you. I've, I've read British Comedy Guide, not the British Comedy Guide, British Dirty Britcom Confessions. Yeah, yeah. The, There's more up. Oh, there are, there are three mentally deranged women <laughs> who post directly on there. There's one that all are very much about wanting to be on Taskmaster and you are, are asking for tasks and re the rewards of taking your clothes off. <laughs> And then having sex in front of the studio audience whilst being filmed and looking at yourself on a big screen. That's a new one. Would that, you do... That's what I want. <laughs> no, that's, that's what the... I'm guessing young lady, but, in, you know, maybe a young man. Oh. Do you have a, do you have a beauty secret? Do you have a, a I, regime? Yeah, I suppose the, the one... Um, the one vain thing I do that I'm amazed I'm admitting to is, <laughs> is um, that I... Uh, Put a little bit of dye in my um, beard. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was um, a man over in my park uh, who runs the local cafe who said, and this is just genuinely how he talks, he went, he went no, no, no. And I went, what? He goes, this, no. And I went, oh, you don't like it? He goes, no, you look a hundred years of age. Um, you've got to draw some just for men through that. So I do draw a little bit through the sides to stop okay. me looking like Santa. <laughs> And that's the only thing I do. Yeah. You look like Tim Allen halfway to transitioning to Santa, though, in the Santa Claus. Thanks. That's all right. He's a, he's a handsome man. He's a good-looking man. <laughs> I didn't expect that question to get, like, such a revelation. That'll be in the, that'll be in the Daily Express. Once this comes out, yeah. That'll be the front page. You can't really tell, but if I don't put a little bit in, it's just totally white, and it yeah. just makes me look 65, so... OK. Yeah. This is all. This is all natural. My my one. Is it? Yeah. This is all. This is all naturally. I never go full Noel Edmonds, but I don't. No. Think, <laughs> I don't think there's any shame in taking the edge off it. No. Can you be sure? Because surely Noel Edmonds never thought he would go. He, like with Noel Edmonds, it was it was quite subtle, and then suddenly one week on Dark Deal, no like, deal, it just went like he was. A... Just looked like children's felt. <laughs> all of a sudden. Because it's an to act do... of madness. <laughs> To look in the mirror and go, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that, I think we'll get away with that. <laughs> you won't, Noel. 
<laughs> what do you think the production team did that he turned up like that? Because they wouldn't have been able to... I think they're too busy looking in the mirror and going, oh, God. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I'd be doing films by now. <laughs> right, um, here is an emergency question. It's hot as fuck in here, isn't it? <laughs> is it? No. Oh, no, the old heart. <laughs> <laughs> If you go if during this interview, we'll put it out as a tribute to you, including, <laughs> Thanks, including your death and death rattle. Thanks. And I'll be much. laughing for a bit because I think you're joking, and then we'll go. So then I'll pull a serious face at the end when I know. So I go, you do a show about it. <laughs> yeah, I do a show. It might be my step up to the big time. My God, who do you think you are? The man who murdered Greg Davies. <laughs> right. <laughs> Through laughter. Um, what? What the fuck is this? <laughs> What's the most impressive? What's? The... I don't even understand this question. I'm going to ask it to you. I wrote it. What's the most impressive place that you have revealed your naked? Is that Doesn't gone to sense. print? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Fucking hell! Is it self-published? That. <laughs> Is it self-published? The most impressive. No, it's gone through a proper publisher. Someone's proofread that and gone, yep. What's the most impressive place that you've revealed your naked? Not where you've been naked. Where well, I've revealed my naked. <laughs> hey, I'm naked. I don't, I don't think I've ever revealed my uh, naked anywhere impressive. Okay. I don't really like being naked. I don't even like looking at myself naked. But I can tell you that the freest I've ever felt <laughs> naked yeah. was on a hillside in Spain. Um, and someone had bought me a caftan and I went out in the place I was staying very early morning and my girlfriend at the time was in bed and uh, it was 6am in the morning and I went out in my caftan and I stood on the side of a mountain and I lifted my caftan up <laughs> and I just urinated off the mountain without touching my penis and I don't think you've ever done that no. it is, oh man, it is so liberating I'm... The, all of the men here and the women, I guess, yeah. it might be a bit more messy. You must go home and try and have a wee with your hands behind <laughs> your head. It's so free. Yeah. It's like returning to the wild. So I guess that's the, um, the best way I've yeah, revealed my naked. Nice. <laughs> Usually you've got someone to hold it for you as well. That's the thing, isn't it? So yeah. it's, uh, maybe that's what he was up to. I was just, come on, it's, yeah. urine. it's time for I the urine it, sample. I needed it lifted by three inches. <laughs> Um. <laughs> okay, here's a question for you, I think. I think you'll like this one. Would you rather be the face of a twin, mostly absorbed in utero, staring out of the stomach of your otherwise <laughs> regular twin? <laughs> You'd be able to think independently and talk and pass comment on what they were up to. <laughs> Look how pleased <laughs> you are. Chat with them when they're lonely, or when you're lonely, or be the prisoner of... <laughs> This is quite near the end of the book. <laughs> I did the last couple of hundred quite quickly. This is you oh. dra draining the remains of a bottle of whiskey and going, fuck it. Watching the word count creep up. <laughs> fuck it. Or be the prisoner of a Randy Bigfoot. It, it was... <laughs> who so far has treated you kindly enough, but has a look in its eye. <laughs> <One of those. laughs> uh, what, so, uh, <laughs> just distilling those down a bit? Well, you're either the twin, the abs ma mainly absorbed twin of it, someone else in the stomach, I would guess, of like a bit like they uh, guess Total Recall, that little baby in Total Recall. Oh, so I'm I'm uh, I'm just a small face within someone else's stomach. Yeah, but you've got you've got your independent. Thought. Would I rather be that? Yeah. Or would I rather <laughs> risk being potentially fucked by a Sasquatch? <laughs> well, a Bigfoot is a different thing, but yeah. Is a Bigfoot a different thing to a yeah, Sasquatch? They come from different regions. <laughs> That's like saying, you know. Uh, uh, an African elephant's the same as an Indian elephant, and they've got different ears. Okay. 
What, what's the key physiological difference between Sasquatch and Bigfoot? Well, I don't know the whole I just want to know whether it's, it's a giant penis. It's just... <laughs> just well, no Richard, in answer to your question, yes. I, I, would, I think I would prefer the freedom of um, <laughs> moving around and fending for myself and the small chance that the Bigfoot wouldn't fuck me <laughs> than being absorbed within someone else's stomach. Okay. So I think that would be my answer, yeah. There's another question. <laughs> would you rather have the living face of your own twin, who you had mostly absorbed in utero, <laughs> staring out of your stomach, yeah. who would be able to think independently and talk and pass comment on what you were up to and chat with you when you're lonely? Yeah. Or live on top of the pole in the desert for 30 years like Simeon style items? <laughs> Oh, so I this do. time, you're, you're in, you know, it's just a twin, kind of friendly little yeah. clock face. It's all about freedom of movement for me, really, yeah. Rich. <laughs> and I don't want to be trapped in someone else's stomach, and I don't want to live on top of a pole okay. like uh, David Blaine. So, um, <laughs> for 30 years? Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would okay. have a small voice in my stomach. Okay, in that case. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, it feels like you've been asked that before. Yeah. <laughs> from the way you've responded yeah, quite angrily. Have you got a twin in utero? I've seen your stomach, there's nothing in there. Um, you have a see-through toaster. Yes. Yeah. this what show, the showbiz life has become? Alex Horn's really, really jealous of it. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, genuinely furious that he wants a see-through toaster. And I can't say that I'm at all excited by it. <laughs> So, so you can see your toast? You can see it going brown and think, yeah. oh, yeah, that's brown enough. But there is a design flaw, because who sits watching? <laughs> the point of a toaster is it automatically does your toast for you, yeah. right? So if you're having to sit watching it go brown, yeah. then it's... Um, I'll tell you what it is, Rich. Yeah. It's a solution looking for a problem. <laughs> OK. So we should talk about Taskmaster. You are the Taskmaster. Undeniably. Yeah. <laughs> It's a fantastic show. We had little Alex Horn on. He's not that little. He's quite. Oh, he's, quite he's six foot two, I think. Yeah, he's quite big. Yeah. Compared to me. Uh, and and I think uh, he genuinely finds it irritating does that, he? that people now know him as little Alex Horn. <laughs> and something that I'm drunk with joy on. <laughs> any irritation I can cause him. It's a lovely relationship the two of you have, permeating through those, growing through those many, many series you've done now. How many series have you done? You've done seven. Seven, yeah. Yeah. And more to come. Many more. Yeah, to come. I would think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a joy for me, obviously, because Alex does all the work. <laughs> yeah. But no, it, I think it, but it's, a, it's one of those things that a lot of t um, telly shows that get made, broadcasters will just give them one series, and if it's not everything they hoped it would be in that one series, yeah. then they stop um, making the programmes. But with um, uh, Dave and Taskmaster, they just kept going, because I think, Mine and Alex's little fun thing has genuinely developed as we've gone on. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know Alex at all, really. No, it's a, it's a really nice relationship. I mean, it feels like a relationship that was, you know, that, was, that predates that, but that's that you just... You, it, it didn't really, though. Did you, could, did you know when you, were, when you were offered it, did you know... Because obviously getting you on board was a big help for them, because you were, you know... I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I was delighted yeah. to be offered, and I, uh, and I just... Could said, you see the potential immediately, or was it well, was uh, obvious? If I'm honest with you, I, I, it was just that Alex did it, and I have been to see Alex's shows, and I think he's really clever and funny, and so, I, yeah, I just said yes based on that, if I'm yeah. honest. I didn't know whether the show would work or not. Yeah. Who do you think is the biggest idiot you've had on the show so far as a I guess? don't think there's been any idiots on it, because Phil it's Wang. Ce celebratory. Phil, Phil Wang. <laughs> no, I think... I would say that he is the only person I think I've judged far too harshly. <laughs> I, I, I've watched a couple of them back and I thought, oh, no, you've really stitched Wang up there. <laughs> but it's hard, you know. I'm making the decisions genuinely in the studio and, yeah. and judging people. And uh, it's genuinely quite stressful at times. <laughs> so I don't always get it... You don't always get it... Right. You know, well, you do get it right because you're the taskmaster, but sometimes it feels... Yeah, like it's grossly unfair. Do you feel yeah. you gave Rod an easier ride because he's your mate? I certainly did not. <laughs> and I've, you're, you're not the first person to suggest this. And I'm telling you now, there is no way I want Rod to do well in any aspect of his life. <laughs> Even if it's on a joke game show, I utterly refute that I was helping him in any way. That's what someone who was helping him would say. Yeah, well... Is. 
It's a very Trumpian response to that. I'm furious with myself if that's how it's appeared. <laughs> um, and do, does, does, is there a lot in that show that doesn't make it to the screen? I did ask Alex. So much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether uh, Alex has meticulously planned the tasks and filmed them, so I don't know that there are many tasks that don't make it to the screen eventually. But in the studio, it's like any of those shows, we just talk for ages. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, uh, over two hours we record for right. every time, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, what a laugh. It's a very, very enjoyable show. It's a wonderful show to be yeah. part of, yeah. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> That's why I, imagine. That's why I sometimes, sometimes imagine that. I, and I, I got Who Do You Think You Are before I even did that. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, last night, I slept from 10.30 to 5.30. Yeah. Didn't get up to go to do a wee. <laughs> when was the last time... That happened. <laughs> I, ge I genuinely couldn't tell you. And yeah. at 11 a.m. tomorrow, I have an appointment with the doctor to talk about my prostate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> will you give us a ring and let us know how it goes? I put it on will, as a yeah. extra at the end. Give us a ring's unfortunate. Because <laughs> I have got to have a prostate examination yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I am up at um, 3.30 oh, yeah, every yeah. day with... Uh, every night with um, the middle-aged piss. Right. It's uh, yeah. a living fucking hell. Do you, do you have kind of panic attacks? And I've started having sort of pan attack, panic attacks when I wake up in the middle of the night. My kids sleep through now till about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. So, like, I, I, can, I should be able to sleep through the night. But I often, like, wake up about 2.30, having had a weird dream, and then feeling really uncomfortable and not knowing why. And I can't turn the lights out and I have to go and walk downstairs and and have a light on and I can't sleep for about two hours and then I can sleep again. No, I don't have any of that. No, okay. Probably that sort of thing that happens in the next year for you. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to warn you. It's really horrible because it's like you sort of think, fuck, is this actually, is this sort of slight sense of fear and dread and, not, and feeling like you're going a bit crazy, which I am not. Uh, is that what life is going to be? Because as you get older, you know, your brain decays as well, doesn't it? And then you go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I am, my memory of this podcast is it was far more hopeful <laughs> we were young we were young men in our mid 40s do you really feel do you really feel age do you, do you find it difficult I, no I don't I've, I found 40 harder than 50 I think it's because I've got so much going on it don't, I don't just every that's maybe the only time I get is 2 o'clock in the morning maybe that's when my existential dread can kick in I think it's all it is I've yeah. had it for a bit but it's sort of happened it happens when I've drunk a bit too much and had chilly too late in the day. So it's nothing to do with age. It's I don't to know. do with your ter well, it, terrible diet. I used to be able to. I used to be able to get drunk and eat, eat chilli late at night and still be able to sleep. But now, what I find about drinking yeah. now as a middle-aged man is that if I get drunk, I have forty-eight hours of absolute depression. <laughs> <laughs> do you? Uh, yeah, I get you. Definitely, uh, it's a knock. It's a knock. Yeah, it's all uh, literally awful. Yeah. This uh, podcast is sponsored by beer52.com. <laughs> beer52.com slash RHLSTP if you want eight free beers and to feel terrible <laughs> after drinking them and dying. Come on, Richard. I like being I like We being can old. pull this back, mate. We can, we can do it. It's going to be fine. I got a round of applause for sleeping through the night without doing a wee. They love us. That's good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the most, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, well done. <laughs> but I genuinely cannot remember the last time I hadn't, didn't have to get up at half past two to do a wee. And I'd had a beer and everything. That's great. Well, I'm yeah. really pleased for you. Thank you. It was good. <laughs> Are you ever mistaken for Greg Davis, the children law specialist? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he's ever mistaken for you? No. Do you think anyone ever rings up and goes, oh, I don't think I want you to do my children's law specialist? No. <laughs> I saw you interviewed saying that you still love touring mm. and you still enjoy it. Yeah, I really do. I think it's a really great thing to do with your life. Why wouldn't you like it? Why do any comics ever moan about it? Well, really you get hard. driven to a town and talk shit for an hour to people who've paid to see you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it's a great thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, as long as people want to do it, you know, see it, I will, yeah. 
I think it's great. I think, but so much of your comedy depends on you enjoying yourself as well, don't you think? So, like, some people can be grumpy, and you're not a grumpy performer in any way, are you? No, no. So, but, yeah. if you don't, if you're not enjoying the stage time, I'm not sure that show would work in the same way as it does. No, I would agree. The, yeah. the, I don't the material could... is flimsy at best. No, I don't think the I think, I think material is good, but I think so much of it is your. So much of it is your glee. It's your childish glee at what you're doing. Yeah. And, I, I, and, and it doesn't feel like you could really... I mean, there's a fakery if you're a dour well. comedian and you don't jump around yeah. gleefully, still, uh, touring is an amazing gift, isn't it? A wonderful thing to do. It is. You still tour? Do you, do do. you not love it any, still? I do, I do, but it's, I find, again, when you've got... To, I, since I've had a family at home, that's oh, the Oh, nice yeah, thing. all right. Well, I can still have kids. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to have kids? I doubt it, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you'd be a good dad. Thanks, Rich. But you say you hate children. The... I don't hate children at all. I've got two nieces and yeah. I, love, I love them. They're great. I tell, I, I've probably told you what, what my uh, nieces uh, said to me a couple of years ago. I walked into the dining room and uh, they're like, they're eight and ten now, so they were six and eight at the time. And as soon as I walked in... Um, the older niece went, oh, we're not allowed to talk about how big your belly is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the younger one, Daisy, came out from behind her and went, but you are fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. They are good. And oh, well, I was going to talk to you, we, the last time we saw each other was at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. That was a strange evening. Just the weirdest... <laughs> <laughs> and walking in and seeing, I was already weirded out by being invited, and then I walked in and saw you. There. <laughs> I walked into a room and saw um, Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch, St Stephen Hawking, and then you. <laughs> and I, thought, I can't imagine why I've been invited. I don't. I can't remember what this is. I think maybe I've dreamt this. <laughs> it was weird, though, wasn't it? Was it was weird. Well, it was a dinner for motor neuron disease. Yeah. And I've never done anything. I know. <laughs> you were a total imposter. <laughs> I'm, yeah, and I think there should be more motor neuron disease, not less. <laughs> it was very difficult for me. I had to eat the food. I feel like a little bit of a hypocrite. <laughs> I had two really surreal moments. Yeah. One is, the reason I've been invited is because I'd done a, a gig and I'd given the proceeds to motor neuro disease. And um, the guy went round and introduced us all and said what we'd done. And he said that you, he said you'd raised loads of money, but you hadn't raised any. For scope, I'd raised loads of money for a for different scope. charity. Nothing to do with motor neuro. <laughs> I can't find it very late on. The guy who worked at the charity used to work at Scope. That was it. Right. <laughs> okay, so you were, <laughs> you were a total imposter. I'd yeah. done a gig, and um, <laughs> when they introduced me, said uh, the organiser said, and this is Greg Davis, who's, uh, who's um, <laughs> um, raised many thousands of pounds for most of your own. And later on, there were two weird things that happened to me. <laughs> later on, Susanna Reid... <laughs> quite aggressively questioned me <laughs> over the top of Stephen Hawking <laughs> about how many thousands of pounds I'd raised. <laughs> she went, you've raised thousands of pounds. <laughs> Hawking was RIP. Was, um, <laughs> was between us. Yeah. She went, you've raised thousands of pounds of you. And I went, uh, yeah, yeah. She went, how many thousands of pounds? And I went, oh, I don't... <laughs> I can't remember. And then... Five minutes later, Benedict Cumberbatch, <laughs> uh, whose wife was heavily pregnant, swept out of the room, and my mum, who was obviously there because I'm obsessed with her, <laughs> my mum went, oh, no, oh, Benedict Cumberbatch has left. I really wanted to meet him. And Judge Rinder... <laughs> it's like I'm making this shit up, isn't it? <laughs> Judge Rinder turned around and went, you want to meet him? You're going to meet him. And he ran across the room, past Hawking and Reed. Sorry, past Stephen Hawking and Susanna Reed and oh, the other strange collection of people, uh, Princess Anne. Princess Anne was there. And, it, and quite aggressively grabbed Benedict Cumberbatch by the arm. He was escorting his pregnant wife out and dragged him back into the room. 
and so he can meet my mum. <laughs> Cumberbatch just going, OK, well done. <laughs> Yeah, so you can let go of my arm, George Render. It's uh, nice to meet you, old lady. Old lady of a comedian, I don't know. Now I'm going to take my pregnant wife home, if you don't mind. Uh, Great night, though, wasn't it? It was good. Who we, else was there? We were, sat, we were sat next to Nick Knowles' wife, but Nick Knowles wasn't there. Nick Knowles didn't make it! <laughs> You fucking hell, Knowles, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't go, well, it's a very generous offer. <laughs> I'll be sending my wife. We were definitely at the bad end, the, the rubbish end of the table. Oh, God, they it got was... us well away from Princess <laughs> Anne. They did. Well no one near Princess Anne, no one near Stephen yeah. Hawking's. Well, they can't avoid me this time. I'm hosting the fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there going to be more man down? I don't know, actually. I don't know. There's a, there's, a, there's a possibility there might be more mundane, but I'm more inclined to possibly do something else. So you're writing something else that you're not going to be in? I'm writing two things, right. one of which I won't be in, and one of which I will be in more than anyone else. Right. <laughs> That's my plan. But yeah. I, well, there is a route where mundane might reappear, but at the moment I'm going to try and do this other thing. Right. Yeah. Any clues? About the thing? Yeah. It's just another silly old comedy. <laughs> yeah. No, I won't tell you the idea, because no. I haven't got it away yet, and it'll just be embarrassing. Yeah. It'll just be... Oh, you know, yeah, remember that shit idea he said on the generic <laughs> podcast that we've never seen? I do all mine on here, and none of them get made. But they're not? Yeah, it's well, the only, but it gives them a little That's life. That's why I'm not gives making that mistake. Gives them a tiny life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a thing I'm re uh, looking forward to. I hope that comes off. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope that... Well, it'd be nice to see more man down. It's, a re, it's a just really silly and fun... Thanks, Rich. ...sitcom. And yeah, and like, they're a right brilliant gang of people. Yeah. Yeah, they were a really nice group, and I hope somewhere in the future maybe there will be something else, yeah. Yeah. We'll Good. see. Let's do... Let's just take a random emergency question and let's see if we're, it works or not. What is the best thing you've ever bounced on? <laughs> I don't think I, <laughs> I, I mean, I had a space hopper. I yeah, guess that's it. I had a, that's I, what sprung to I my had mind. A, a very rare blue space oh, hopper. Oh, blue? Yeah, that was um, bigger than the orange ones because I was an outsized <laughs> child. So they, uh, they sourced a blue uh, space yeah. hopper for me. I guess that's the most yeah. thing I've bounced I, I imagine you're wanting me to. You, no, that, I would that look ever, on your face. I would, I would, I would that look on your face is, is just very sexual innuendo. Question, it's a very You're the only person I know who can do sexual innuendo without saying anything, <laughs> just just by having your face. <laughs> Did you ever fuck your big blue <laughs> smack something? <laughs> <No. laughs> just the that'd be a one-off time if you fucked a spot. I mean, a what a one time! You could do it in the blowhole. The blow, the blowing up hole of the space hopper. Yeah, they were tiny, though. They were. You'd have to extend yeah. it a little bit. What if you? Um, <laughs> it's what anyone who's seen my stand-up show yeah. knows that I um, fornicated with my uh, teddy bear as yes. a child. I mean, it was a big teddy bear, though. It wasn't like it was, a little. It was five foot tall. It was like a grown-up teddy bear. It wasn't yeah. a, a child teddy bear. Yeah, it was five foot tall, yeah. and it was tall intents and purposes real. <laughs> and I fucked it real good. <laughs> But let me ask you this. <laughs> when you were going through your um, teenage years, yeah. what did you have sex with? Well, not surprisingly not very much. All boys had sex with something. <laughs> I think the, bear, the most I did, I was very... I, I, would have, I would have counted that as losing my virginity, having sex with the teddy bear. Yeah. And uh, I would have then been disappointed. I was, very, I was a very good boy. Uh, that what, I, there, was a, there was a condom machine in... <laughs> that's worse than it. <laughs> There's a condom machine in the in the local pub that we went to when we were 14. You fuck that. No. <laughs> if you twisted it in a certain way, free condoms came out. Okay. And, we, and then sometimes free money, and we worked out this for a glorious period of about two weeks. We'd go in there, and like a couple of quid would come out, and we'd get four or five packets <laughs> of condoms. 
I wasn't going to have sex for five more years. <laughs> These condoms would have been out of, out of date by the time I ever got a chance to use them. But I had a stash of condoms. That I got. If my parents had ever found those hidden, they'd think, what the fuck is going on? I had like five or six packs of condoms. And I used to have a posh wank every now and again into one of them. That was, that was it. Do you not find that your hands um, smelt afterwards, though? Yeah, yeah. And I flushed them down the toilet, which is a big mistake, isn't it? That's it. Well, because they can ex- they can blow up in the in the in the sewers and block the toilets. They can they can oh. expand. Yeah, don't flush them down the toilet. I didn't know that. I thought that was uh, standard practice. I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you this. Yeah. When I was a young man, um, <laughs> me and um, a friend who I won't <laughs> name, it wasn't a bowl of cheese. <laughs> uh, it was a different friend. When we were sort of very early, t- like twelve, thirteen. And we were looking at a racy magazine. In, <laughs> yeah. He was staying over at, uh, at my um, mum's. Um, and um, we were looking at a racy magazine together and it sort of became an unspoken agreement after we'd looked at the saucy magazine that when the lights went off, we would pleasure ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did and finished. Yeah. And then I was lying there in the dark <laughs> and... Um, I left it like about five, ten minutes, and I went, oh dear. <laughs> I'm like, oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, you're all right, you're all right. And I just heard this, not finished. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to just lie there. <laughs> and I could hear, I can hear every awful <laughs> not finished. <laughs> so horrible, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> I've got a story I want to tell you. Yeah, go. <laughs> I don't think it I don't know whether it's I don't think it's funny, but I think it's the hardest I think it's the hardest I've ever laughed. When I was um, teaching, um, the, 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 two sc- there was the school I taught at um, had um, this idea of inviting all of the teachers and the heads over from a neighbouring school so we could share good practice, which is fucking horseshit. Who, who fucking cares? Just teach the children. Shut up. And it was in our own time. It was this awful. So I was with a friend. We were both heads of department. I was with a friend at the back. And he had... <laughs> I don't, I'm starting the story. I don't think it's funny. <laughs> so we had, like, 50 members, all heads of department, and the governors, and the two heads from the schools, and it was all sort of, yeah, well, like, we practice at our school, and we do this. And I just wanted to kill myself. And I noticed that um, there was a woman um, in my friend's department who had one of those flask mugs that you just... You know, that you just have, and have a sip of, and then you can close them to keep your coffee hot. And she, she was mad, and I was watching her opening and closing a little thing, and there were tears of boredom running down my face. And I looked over at one of the guys from the other school, and he had a watch on, like a really big metal watch, and it looked like a cross-section of her flask mug. And I just wrote my friend a note saying, looks like these two cunts have been shopping in the same place. And I gave it to him, and he, he went... And then we carried on listening. And then he just noticed. <laughs> he noticed the flask mug and the guy's watch. And he just went. And it was a room. It was like this. It was a room with at least 50 to 100 people in it, all listening to someone at the front going, yes, well, you know, the best thing we can do is to look at the way our curriculums uh, <laughs> reflect the needs of the children. And my mate just went, the fucking cross second of the watch and everyone went quiet and the guy who was talking at the front went is there a problem back there <laughs> and he just carried on <laughs> that's that story <laughs> It was really delicious. Yeah. yeah. 
We did. I did. T- Talking Cock was my stage show. Was translating to loads of different languages. Yeah. And like some of them did like very faithful adaptations, and some of them just wrote their own show. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so you were, why have you? Pay, you know, and I don't own the rights to jokes about penises. That's right. it. And so we went to like one place. I think I went with my director to Denmark or something like that. Um, and this guy had completely changed the show. And it was all. I was, we're just going to see your own show in lots of languages you didn't understand. And uh, it, it was all like songs, parody songs of Eminem and stuff like that. You know, it was just so far away from what I was doing. And then there was a really, um, he put us right on the front row. So he was looking at <laughs> 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 If you want to have a go comedy, mate, have a go to your convictions. <laughs> so he put us right on the front row. So we happened to sit there, what, and like, I was just like, this is kind of insulting. You've brought me to Denmark. <laughs> to watch not my show being done in a foreign language I can't understand anyway and you, you know he kept on smiling over at me and stuff and then they started doing he started doing like a really sick it suddenly went the mood changed it was really serious and he started singing something to the tune of Send in the Clowns <laughs> <laughs> and me and my director just were just killing just like everyone was quiet and we were just <laughs> and we just <laughs> and then the woman next to me just so the more we couldn't laugh the more we were just <laughs> and it was basically <laughs> it was a song about date rape <laughs> oh it's funny now <laughs> and it's just these two guys who had laughed at anything in the whole show <laughs> Just like really trying to stop themselves laughing, <laughs> and it was so like against what the show was. The show was like this celebration of men and women and working together. So he put this fucking song about day rape, <laughs> which didn't fit. In anyway. It was so pain. You know, like when just it's so painful. Oh yeah. I remember when I was, <laughs> when I was teaching. Um, my uh, friend, and it is a bowl of cheese. Um, it, we were at the the Christmas. Um, uh, what's it called? The you know Christmas service. <laughs> okay, yeah. The carol service. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we'd spent the whole time in the hymns, uh, underlining certain parts of words to make like knob and dick <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> and we were crying with laughter. And then later I came out and I saw him bollocking a child and he was going, how dare you, how dare you come into the house of God and disrespect messing around. (laughs) And he had a hymn sheet in his hand with dick (laughs) underlined. Oh, it's really bad what teachers do. (laughs) Right, well... Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough in there, isn't there? there I think there is. Yeah. 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 Just leave it then, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> it's been lovely to have you back, Greg. Thank you, and Richard. You're it was welcome lovely to be here. Absolutely, any time. Uh, do check out uh, Netflix, You Magnificent Beast, which he is. You see his tummy in it, it's nice. Yeah, You're a very nice. sexy man. Do you think? Even, though, even though you're 50, I'm not, you know... That's what you're, I. Re- you're not ruling out. I'm not ruling, I'm not ruling out yeah, at the moment. My wife's in the audience. Um, she won't mind. Is it is it cheating to have sex with Greg Davies? I don't. I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure it is. <laughs> I just. Is I, <laughs> I just want to do it so at some point I can say I haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Davies. Hey, 
that was good, wasn't it? Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. I had a lot of fun on that one. Uh, do remember, you can get Beer52 from beer52.com slash for her lust of her. Eight free craft beers. Uh, and uh, just pay package and posting and then you can join in with the rest of it or not. And please buy my book, Emergency Questions. Uh, if you like podcasts, loads of podcasts have got books out this year and it would be great for all of us if you like that podcast to buy their book and prove to the world of publishing that they are investing their money in the right place. Then you don't have to pay for anything because we'll all be billionaires. That's my pitch. Buy that book. Thank you very much for watching. See you. Bye-bye. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>